Um, the next topic is uh, on um, from the HR perspective, a very unique perspective of automation with one of our partner, Fathom. Fathom is a, a AI platform which predicts the future of workforce, how to upskill, retrain your resources, and what jobs might become obsolete in a job uh, vertical. For example, bank operators are no longer there. It doesn't mean that they have been uh, uh, replaced they have been upgraded. So they are doing more high-end jobs. Uh, I remember the first example of ANZ Bank when we were doing automation for them seven years back. They want to automate change of address process, which was very mundane job, and Gen Y don't want to do those type of job. They want more interesting, challenging job. So we changed that job from change of address done by the bot now. From 40 people team, there were only two people team left, handling exceptions but 38 people were upgraded to do some more better value jobs. So I think the future of work is changing, the mindset is changing, the skill set is changing, and the tools are changing. So Fathom is a very good platform to predict what tools to use, what uh, platform to use, what skill to upgrade their team members to. Like in the mining companies, you will not see drivers anymore because they're automating uh, those vehicles. Uh, today we have got Samantha. Are we live? Samantha is joining us from Sydney, and uh, she uh, she is with the HR manager for a French winemaker, the number two globally. Uh, and they who can know much more better than a, of course, alcohol producing company how to be responsible. So I think I have learned a lot in my life how to be responsible when you are next to alcohol company. But I think it's the other way around. They are letting us know how HR has been automated in a more responsible manner. So we have Jonah, who is leading resources mining for Fathom. And we have Samantha, HR, HR manager from, what's the com uh, a French company. I can't pronounce the name correctly, so I will just hand over to Jonah. Now, I'm always one of the ones that are guilty of being too close to the mic. So if that happens, give me a big thumbs down and I'll step back a little bit. Um, thanks for the introduction, Mohit. Um, I lead major industry engagements uh, here at Fathom, as Mohit mentioned, and within that is included the resources, energy, utilities, and manufacturing sectors. Um, at Fathom, we work with organizations and partners like Mohit to help organizations not only assess task automation opportunities across their workforce at speed, but to do so in a way which aligns with the people and future of work necessities that are being asked for of leaders. So everything from producing insights to help with individual job transitions or role or organizational redesigns, all the way through to helping set up full strategic workforce planning uh, practices. Now, this is becoming increasingly important to our clients uh, as they look to sort of balance the risks of these critical skillful shortages um, that we're seeing in the future, as well as asset and digital transformations that are going on with the need to constantly improve processes through automation and technology. Now, one of the clients we work with uh, very closely is Perno Ricard Winemakers. Um, and we're joined today, as Mohit said, uh, by Samantha Clark, who's the regional HR manager for data, strategy, and insights. So welcome, Samantha. Hi, great to be here. Thank you, thank you. Look, I'd love to start by asking you to tell the delegation about um, Perno Ricard's automation journey. Um, and keen to also hear about the work involved in keeping the business ahead of workforce and capability needs as they change as you roll out more technology and automation. Excellent. So, um, as Mohit indicated, we are um, the premium wine business of Pernod Ricard, so that we're the world's second largest wine, spirits and champagne producer in the world. So our wine portfolio spans four countries of origin with brands, including Jacobs Creek, St. Hugo, Stonely, Brancourt Estate, Campo Vecchio, and Kenwood. And as we've heard today in all businesses, we're all focused on transformation really across the business. And we're seeing this across both our corporate functions, but also into our manufacturing operations. And this is really a, you know, an area that we're we're focused on to really cement us as we move forward and try and achieve the business strategy that we have. And I want to talk to you um, today probably about a different automation that we've been working through, which is um, we've been working over the last three years about part and partnered with a New Zealand-based organisation to develop an autonomous vineyard tractor. 
And the key for that was we were looking to design and improve the working experience, the safety, and to drive efficiencies and productivity for our workforce. So think about uh, years gone by, farmers out on the field with their horse and cart and the transition to tractors. Well, we wanted to do something the same so that we were making sure that the safety of our workers and the worker experience was at the heart of everything that we were doing. And so through the implementation of this, what it has done is it's actually helped us make better decisions, but again, keeping safety at the forefront um, and what it has done is it hasn't actually reduced jobs. What it has done is created the new jobs. And I think we've heard this all, already today is that by the implementation of you know, these technologies and automating these things, it's enhancing the roles and enhancing the skill sets of the people that we have. And I think one of the most important thing um, by doing this is through the implementation of technology, it's really given us the ability to look at what skills we actually need both now and into the future. And we know that to do that, we need our people to have a growth mindset. They need to you know, have those problem solving skills. And yes, they still need to have some of these data and digital skill sets, but the softer skills are really becoming more and more the critical ones that can be um, translated and you know, looked at across all different roles. So they don't have to stay in their current position. Great, brilliant. And in terms of how the organizations changed its own ways of working. Have you seen more collaboration across business units that previously might have been siloed in how they work? Yeah, I, in terms of collaboration, it's at the heart of everything that we do. So it's one of our key leadership um, attributes within the organisation. And what we've found is through implementing technology, you actually need to have all parts of the business involved. So it's, when you say technology, it's not about having IT in the room. It's actually about having business in the room. You need to, they need to be able to articulate what the processes are. How do we optimise those? How do we move from where we are today to what that might look like for the future? And, and it also brings in you know, our different functions. So it can actually go across our operations that then link in from a technology platform to our marketing teams, to our commercial teams, right through to our communications, our HR areas, um, and so you, in order for us to get the best outcome for our business and the consumer, because obviously the consumers are the most important things for us, we really need to be collaborating to get the best outcome. Absolutely. And have there been any insights that have been key to your team being able to stand this program up and be successful in it? Definitely. I think um, the last 12 months, we've really identified the need to have strategic workforce planning in place and we're on that journey today. Uh, what that has meant is that, you know, and working in partnership with Fathom, is it's really about how do we understand and identify what we know from a technological impact, what's coming through, how is that going to impact? And when we look at that, we look at it not just at a role level, we can look at that at a task level. And what that can then tell us is, are there roles that, you know, may not exist in the future, but also what roles might be augmented and what skills do we need to ensure that we have um, for the future? One of the other insights it's really led us to do is, you know, we're really trying to um, focus on how we move away from what we need our, our people to have based on projects being implemented. Because, you know, we look at the project and say, okay, we need to upskill in X, but actually we need to be on the forefront and saying, what do we need to upskill our people for in the th next three years because that could actually go across multiple projects. Um, and so it's really about looking at it holistically rather on, a, on that, you know, what are we doing next point of view. Absolutely, thanks for that. Thanks for the uh, cheeky little fathom plug. Um, and what does, it, it broadly, right, um, or as broadly as you want, the future of Perno Ricard look like in terms of the automation program and its people? Uh, we've got automation programs across the whole network of our business, whether it's being uh, driven from a global organisation right through to our, our local areas. So we have things that are focused on key digital programs to look at how we segment, how we you know, operate across the different markets, are focused on our conviviality platforms. So you know, how do we ensure that we've, we've got the relationships and, and people are connecting with each other? Uh, we heard a lot about how you can automate in finance, and that's definitely one of the major transformation programs uh, that we have on our agenda. 
and particularly in the operations space with the technologies, the AI, you know, the different modes that we have, they're really being the key areas that we're looking at, you know, really to drive efficiencies and to, live, to deliver to the consumer. Uh, what we do know is that, you know, we need to put people at the heart of everything we do. Um, and when we're doing that, we're really focused on ensuring that we, we're understanding what future capabilities look like. What that means is it means that we can put our employees' well-being at, at the forefront, keeping in mind that as we implement these transformation journeys, change is a constant and being able to, you know, navigate and work through change. And I know we've heard that through a couple of the speakers as well today. Um, and really for us, you know, the, the key for us in terms of the future is how do we be in a better position to really leverage the efficiencies that come with that varying change and maximize the return on investment. Brilliant, thanks for that. And you know the final question that's coming, and to the audience, when we prepared for this fireside, the first question I asked her was this question, because I wanted to see if, if her answer was gonna be authentic and right, and I really liked your answer. So what does responsible automation mean to Pernod Ricard? So for us, it's, and, and for myself, it actually means that we're ensuring that we're putting our people and safety first. I know I've said safety a number of times, but it really is at the heart of what we do. Um, it's about ensuring that we have those plans in place, that we understand what those capability skills are that we really need. And then also putting in place the actions so that we can ensure that our people uh, have those capabilities and have the skills for the future. Um, and ensuring that, you know, those, even if the skills are not necessarily going to be in their roles today, ensuring that we're equipping them for whatever that might be in the next few years. Brilliant. Um, we thought at this point, you know, you hear, heard about a live, um, pretty significant automation program with Perna Rickard. We might open it up to some questions from the audience if there are any. There was a mic floating around. No? Well, there were a couple that were sort of sent in prior to, from people that couldn't make it. Um, no, no takers? All right, so look, <laughs> hindsight being 2020, um, and with the experience that Pernod Ricard has gained to date, uh, if you had to restart your automation journey now, is there anything you, that you would have done differently? Yeah, definitely. I think um, one of the, the key things is, you know, knowing that you need to ensure that you have leadership commitment and not just leadership commitment but leadership understanding buy-in and the the ownership there and that's not just at a top level because i think sometimes we think that it has to be top down but you actually need it at the point that you know you're putting in those automations etc and having your leaders being able to equipped to be able to manage through change um, i think sometimes we you know we have change given or put on us, but it's really about how you can take people on the journey. And some of the things we learned through that was how do we then ensure that we're getting the people involved and looking at identifying how can we get them to be champions through the automation and, and through any of our journeys that we're going through. Brilliant. And um, I think you touched on this question before, but I think it's a pretty relevant one. Um, what would you call out as critical data points for a program for members of the delegation who might be considering their own way forward as far as automation journeys? I think in terms of your data points, you know, I think there really is a key around uh, really look, leaning into understanding what's the future skills requirements. Like I said, you know, we've been on this journey about strategic workforce planning, you know, and, and we've come in leaps and bounds. But it's really about that allowing that to really set us up for success. So it's taking in things, you know, what are the technology impacts that are coming through? What are the macroeconomic factors? Looking at it in terms of the business strategies. So it's not just focusing on that technological component, but it's actually looking at all aspects of that and then how that impacts in terms of what the future workforce may or may not look like. And I think that's really key in terms of being able to really drive um, and have uh, the, the organisation set up for success. As we know, the labour market and trying to find skilled workers uh, is tightening and the ability to retain um, our people and have those critical skills is at the forefront of what we really need to focus on um, because we can put in all of the automations, et cetera, but if we don't have the people, 
that we can then leverage to actually get the efficiencies and you know have that um, people-led and safety-led culture first, we won't get the, the right outcomes. Completely agree. And this is the last question, um, and, and I think you've answered this already, but um, uh, how correlated is workforce upskilling to the success of any responsible automation program? I think if you don't upskill your workforce, mm. the automation will be, will be implemented, but you actually won't get the return on investment. And I think, you know, you're not going to maximise the the outcomes that you that you're going to need. And I'll give you an example. We, with a lot of the the technologies we're implementing around AI, you know, one of the foundational skills is critical thinking. So if we don't upskill our people in that critical thinking, the outputs that are being that are coming out as a result of AI are not then going to be leveraged to the maximum potential. And so we're actually getting a, a lot less return on investment as a result of that implementation of technology. Absolutely. Um, Sam, that was awesome. And I hope the delegation got um, some value uh, out of hearing about Pernod Ricard's journey. I think it's incredible hearing about a company of your size um, really taking the time to consider the human aspect of the automation journey that everyone in the room um, is on. So thank you again for your time. Thank you so much. See you later. I can't get that on the plane. Can you go for Slanko? Thanks, uh, Jonah, for your insights and Samantha's insight from HR perspective. Uh, I I think very, what we are doing with uh, uh, Fathom is that most of our clients uh, want to scale up the automation program and they're finding more areas for automation, but they are not considering HR as one of the key area, some clients, not all the clients. So by using Fathom, we are trying to scale up the automation by finding more areas where the jobs might become obsolete. For example, uh, in a banking environment, again, change of address, bank operators, so why don't we automate those process looking at the insights from uh, FISM platform? And what we have done, we have integrated MindEasy, our platform, with FISM to get data directly into MindEasy and give the clients uh, uh, a vision where they can automate the process where the jobs might become obsolete or they require more upskilling and training. So the client get a whole comprehensive ROI on their automation journey. So the next, uh, thank you, Jonah and Samantha, for joining this, uh, for this uh, the, sharing your insights. The next topic is uh, on the automation in the non-for-profit organization. So we have, we have a client like St. John of God is also non-for-profit. This particular client is Lifeline Australia. And uh, there's a tool which we used uh, for automation for using APIs. So it's API-based automation, and the tool name is Workato, which is a function or, uh, or adding the work, work and automation, Workato. And they are, uh, they are there for last uh, 15 years. The founder, Vijay Tala, was the founder, founding member of TIPCO. And they do a lot of integration from IPAS, IPAS perspective. And we find them quite useful because as the clients are using multiple tools, like, for example, Amelia for... Uh, conversational AI, uh, RPA, you have Automation Anywhere, UiPath, then you have OCR tool like Abby, uh, Document Understanding, IQBot. So you need to integrate with multiple uh, applications to give an outcome to the client. And we are using Workato as a backend uh, integrator, so multiple applications and tools can talk to each other and give an outcome to the client. Now, now for onboarding of an employee, or offboarding of an employee, I God forbid offboarding should not be there, you can directly do it from Teams or Slack. You don't have to go to multiple system to onboard a person. So look at how much time you save, but more importantly, what is the EX or employee experience they gain when you join on day one and by press of a button, you get your laptop done, your uh, access created, your pass created, your app, your access to all the apps are done with a click of a button from Teams only. So look at the employee experience for HR uh, organization and also for the employee who is joining on day one. So we have done partnership with them 
And the example which we are showing currently is for Lifeline Australia, which is a non-for-profit uh, organization. And John Deep, who is a country manager for uh, Vagato, is speaking to uh, John Wheat from Lifeline, uh, Peter Wheat from Lifeline,